you know, did you go to school? Um, what did you go to school for? Well, after I got out of jail, I decided, <laughs> to, decided to do to be honest and forthright. Hey, hey, hey I, I, I went to jail too. Hi, Nikki here. This is Cass King on the line with your host, with your host, Nikki. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another show of Cast King on the Line with Nikki. And today, not only do we have one special guest, but we have two very special guests. <laughs> we have Sandy and Clay Roberts. Hi, guys. Hey, <laughs> it's great to have how you. How you doing? How oh, are you, Nikki? I'm doing wonderful. I'm really excited. This is the first time on my show that I've had two people, two guests on, uh, let alone a husband and wife. So are we um, fitting in? Are we fitting in the screen, Nikki, together with both of us? You fit perfectly. Oh, and for my okay. people that are are not seeing this as a video, as as a, a podcast rather, uh, Sandy and Claire are wearing both uh, sweatshirts together, the same sweatshirt, black sweatshirt with Cass King writing on it, and uh, they look absolutely adorable. <laughs> Actually, these sweatshirts are very comfy. Are they really? Those yeah. Are the Cass King yeah. hoodies. These yeah. these were some of the original ones yeah. in a color I don't think is available. Yeah, you? unfortunately, I don't think this color is available anymore, but they are very comfortable. And I believe that the current company makes the same one. So we just happen to have an older version. Older version. Well, I really so like, we really you, like them. you really do look so cute together. <laughs> we rock them. We, rock yeah, them. we are dirt. We are dirt products, Nikki. He's Clay and I'm Sandy. If you mix us together, we're top soul. <laughs> Or mud, depends, you no. know, a lot of water, it's Top mud. Topsoil is way better than mud. Oh, this I'm in, <laughs> top soil. I'm, I'm sticking with topsoil. <laughs> I'm sticking with mud. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, this is great. This is awesome. Oh, that's, this is why I was so excited to have you guys on. I, this, is, this is perfect. This is going to be a great night. <laughs> so... All right, let me let me start with, I have so many questions for you, but let me start with, uh, how did you get into this together? Uh, how, well, first of all, when did you start with casking? How long ago? I mean, this is- We're going on our fourth wow. year. Fourth? Yeah, this fourth. year coming up will be our fourth year. Yeah. Okay, and four years. Sheets. Almost, we'll be, we'll be going into our fourth year. So we've been with them three years now. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, uh, now together as a group, as a team, uh, you started together as a team. I mean, obviously, I know your husband and wife, uh, but you you decided to go together and do these things together, right? Shows or um, yeah, as a yeah. team. We're a package deal. Yeah, We're a package deal. <laughs> now we, I, we do our own competitions as well. Um, sometimes I'll enter something Clay doesn't enter. He'll enter something I don't enter. Um, that type of thing as far as when we're competing. Um, we're very skilled fly casters. We weren't originally that way. Clay was a very good, very skilled, excellent fly caster and a top level performing caster and also a fly casting instructor. And then there was me and I had never had a fly rod in my hand. So then he had to teach me how to fly rod cast. So this is going back a lot of years ago, but he finally got me casting a little bit and I'll never forget what show, was it Outdoor Life Network? So we do a contest on Outdoor Life Network and they have all these cameras that are coming into your head about a foot away from you it seemed and Clay gets through the course and we were a team. So he had to deal with me casting and, um, and I had just learned how to cast and we're a team and he gets through the course really well. And then now it's my turn. And I did, I pretty much miss every target. I think you I froze. So <laughs> this show, I get done going through and I'm like sweating and I'm just glad to be done with the whole thing. And the, the guy, the TV producer comes up to me and he says, you know, I've never seen somebody cast so perfectly and miss each target. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> But, That's hilarious. Yeah. So poor oh Clay, God. I mean, we, I mean, and the thing was, that was back in the day. I mean, the prize was what, a $60,000 prize or something. And I mean, he was fine. His score was great, but we needed a little bit of performance for me in that. And we got zero for me at that time. And, and it was at that time that I said, you know, 
if I want to do good in these contests, I have to start really practicing. And we live in the snow in the winter. And um, some of the big shows that we would enter contests in and casting were in January. So that meant Clay built a fly casting pond in our backyard. It was how long? 90 feet? 90 feet of water. Yeah. And we put um, targets. targets out and then we had Obstacles. light. And we would be out there when it was 30 degrees or lower with gloves on, sweatshirts, jackets, every, yeah. practicing because our, our first contest of the year would be in January and we had nowhere to practice. And there was a distance segment involved, a long distance segment. And so we had to practice this outside. And it was, I mean. We, we live at 9,500 feet above elevation. Oh my on goodness. A, on a mountain pass. Mountain pass is notoriously windy. We, we don't have any protection around us. We're just like the highest thing around. And uh, so a lot of our practice, why we had to put lights up was because it is so hatefully windy during the day that we had to practice at night just to be able to get halfway calm conditions where we can actually, you know, cast. So yeah, was, well, now, a lot of our neighbors think we're quite weird, you know, out in our backyard, <laughs> casting in the middle of the night, you know, under lights, but. Well, Clay, you are quite weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I was hoping that wouldn't get out just yet. You know, but... it's out now. Everybody knows. <laughs> okay. I, he, he, I resemble that. Yeah. Now. When he was first teaching me how to cast, I would go to the local park when I was down the hill in Colorado Springs, and um, the kids would yell out their windows from the houses next to the park, what are you fishing for? And this was a park, it was just grass, you know? Yeah. So then we got pretty smart Avalicky and started telling them we were fishing for grass carp, and that ended that. They stopped bugging us when we were practicing. Then there was another place we used to practice, and the guy that drove the horse and buggy carriage for the tourists drove by on purpose while we were practicing and they would stop and watch us. Remember that? That was wow. a long time ago, but it was funny. <laughs> you know, these tourists are sitting there watching us fly cast in the middle of a park and they're being in a horse and buggy carriage, so. <laughs> now, I have to ask, I mean, you guys get along really great. I mean, but there has to be working together as much as you do and as long as you do. I mean, you have to have arguments. There's gotta be. I mean, it's got to be kind of crazy at times, right? Yeah, I, uh, my main argument is I like wheat bread and she likes white. No, I so like we, sourdough. We're always, <laughs> we're always fighting over that. Sourdough is white. Oh. So, you know, he's, that's he's our biggest. He's got a point. That's our, that's our <laughs> sourdough biggest, is different. That's our biggest <laughs> point of contention. So, no, we, we get along pretty well. Yeah, you know, um, I'd say during a bass tournament when you're under the most stressful point and we're competing as a team together. Yeah. You, you know, there, sometimes you're wanting to have the five fish in the live well before they should be in there. That would be me. And I start getting a little bit, we don't, Nancy. <laughs> we only have three fish, Clay. We need two more, you know, and, and <laughs> so I feel like I'm putting the pressure on him sometimes, or it can go the opposite way too. He might say, you know, that was the worst cast I've ever seen. And I'm sitting there like, really? <laughs> you know, so you do, you know, but no, I mean, we get along really well. We, the hell yeah, we're, we're lucky to have, we have the same passion, right? It's fishing, casting, casting. Right. So we're always working on, even if they're different projects, Sandy may be working on this, like tonight she's been working on her kayak. I'm a new kayak guy. I have a, just bought a kayak a, a month ago. But we're always like kind of working on similar things. We can kind of feed off of each other. We're researching you know, and I'm finding yeah. this and she gets to do that. And That's so the best. It's, yeah, it's just, it's definitely, we're not necessarily joined at the hip, but we do work in conjunction and we achieve more that way. You know, kind of two two brains is better than one. So to Absolutely, speak. you're a team. With us two, we need two brains. I mean, that's, if, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, half and <laughs> half, yeah, we don't a want whole, to right? Half and a half. We don't want to rely on just one brain. <laughs> hey, teamwork makes the dream work, right? Whatever, whatever yeah, makes it work. <laughs> ask you if you liked your kayak. I don't yes. know. I haven't got it wet yet. So I, I sit it in the garage and I play like I'm paddling and it's not so fun. But hopefully we'll get it in the water here as soon as it uh, gets that hard stuff off the top of it and yeah. we'll get to do some do some bass fishing here. Now that's but it's fun. Yeah. We're rigging it, rigging it up. It's it's a lot of fun. 
Right. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I, uh, I just can't, I can't get the sitting down and fishing part. You know, it's just, it's not, I can't get comfortable doing that. Uh, yeah, and, I, I wonder how that's going to be, you know, because I, yeah. I like casting. I like casting and, you know, exactly. moving around. Thing, different, right. different sort of cast casts, different casts for different situations. And it's like, man, I'm going to be, you know, this far above the water. How am I going to be able to do that cast? You know, instead of standing on a boat where you have, you know, eight feet of room to be able to do that cast. So it'll, it'll be, we'll, we'll figure it out. What about you, Sandy? You like kayaks are big enough to stand up in and every once in a while, like I taught a class for one of the kayak stores locally in Colorado a couple of years ago. And so, of course, I stood up in the kayak just to show the ladies that you could stand up in the kayak and paddle. But I don't typically stand up and fish in it. I, the lake, our main lake is so busy with boats and especially the wakeboard boats with the big, huge wakes that I, I'm not, I mean, I don't really like to stand up in it and I don't have one of those bar things. What are those called? You know, some of the people have them that you can stand up and you can lean against the bar. Um, right. Clay's kayak's a little bigger than mine. His 14 foot, so his is a little bit wider, right? So his might be a little bit easier to stand up in. I might try it again, room. but I, yeah, he's got more more room in yeah, the area you sit in. It's wider. It's yeah. more stable for sure. Yeah, I see. So, yeah, but I, I, I mean, it's it is weird because sometimes you know I just um, did a rod rack. In fact, I just finished a video on it, and that should be on YouTube pretty soon, hopefully. But um, the rod rack is going to have the rods stand up right behind me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you do, you know, everywhere you place your rods, you limit where you're fishing because if the rods are inside the kayak area where I'm sitting, then I'm limiting when I have to take the measuring board and measure the fish and try to get pictures and not have a shadow. I mean, you you have to think of every, every element when you're doing this, not have a shadow from the rods and things when I lay the measuring board down to measure the fish. So it's like, okay, if they're behind me standing up, they're out of the way of the cockpit of the kayak, but if they're laying down in the kayak, they might potentially be in the way of a picture I have to take for a competition. I see. So, it, you know, it's, he hasn't, he hasn't done that part of it yet, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, you, you've done them, right? Haven't you at uh, the contest when you've done the big bass? Out of your kayak? Kayak, right? I, when I do the big, I've done the big bass world championship, but I've never done the kayak version. Uh, oh, the, okay. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Okay, yeah. I just I wasn't comfortable. I, I, uh, I'd be out there fishing in it and I just sitting and cat, I just, I can't, I just don't, didn't like it very much, but, uh, that's in, it's different when in fluke, I've had fluke with me, our dog and fluke is really good about sitting in the back behind my seat. But if Fluke is with me, then that means nothing that goes in that area, the basket, the rod rack, any of that stuff can be there. So then I have to really compact what I'm like, I'll go down to just a couple of rods and stuff like that instead of five, maybe I'll just have two on board. And, and then I have that area empty. Right. So Fluke can be on the boat, but. Okay, I get yeah. you. Yeah. Now yeah. Uh, I'll start with, uh, I'm gonna ask you both, but I'll start with Clay. Um, you know, how, how did you start down this path? I mean, what, uh, were you always interested in fishing or outdoors? Uh, you know, did you go to school? Um, what did you go to school for? Well, after I got out of jail, I decided, <laughs> to, decided to do something better with my life. People are listening to this oh. on the radio too. <laughs> oh. oh my God, that is absolutely I thought nice. you wanted us to be honest and forthright. Oh, I, I, hey. Hey, I, I I went to jail too for. for but she was a policeman, so or a sheriff. So there, <laughs> don't ruin it, Sandy. <laughs> but I was a felon. I was a felon. No, he wasn't. <laughs> so you're on the other side. <laughs> well, not that far on the other side. Oh my God. <laughs> now I I was fishing. I was fortunate. I had parents that I think kind of looked out for me. Um, raised in the country, um, I think my father had a specific plan for us kids. I have a brother and a sister. And he was going to raise his family in the country. So, nice. yeah, had a, had a little stream that ran through the property that happened to have fish in it. And Clay was the fisherman out of the family. 
So I, I got a lot of practice from a very young age, catching fish, you know, nothing, you know, suckers and chubs and little yeah. carp and, and stuff, you know, just a fun, fun fish for a kid. And fishing has been in my blood ever since. And it just, just so progressed, uh, progressed on up through the years, got really heavy into fly fishing, uh, self-taught, wanted to fly fish. And this is before I knew Sandy and, uh, Sandy came along late in life, right? When did we get married? Uh, you don't know? Tell me. Come on. How'd you like meet? It. How'd y'all meet? You got married in 2002. Seems like forever ago, but yeah, 2002. <laughs> but uh, so not that long ago. The, you're gonna be sleeping on the couch tonight, Clay. Uh, There's well, plenty of room here for him to sleep in. Fluke, fluke, me and fluke, we, we you get along fluke okay together. on the couch. Yeah. 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 Fluke will be in the room with me. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it was just something. It was it was just something I wanted to do, and I wanted to be good at. I had a little bunch of friends that kind of did the same thing, and I wanted to be better than them, and just practice and practice and practice. It went into competitions, got lucky at a few different competitions where won a substantial amount of money, and kind of was it noticed by the industry, and got some, into some professional sort of pro deals. And then Sandy came along, and and at that time, and even still now, a couple working together, a husband, especially a husband and wife, that's kind of an unusual thing to both right. have two people in the industry working together, pretty close to being equally skilled. And as you can tell, Sandy is very outgoing. She can s s sell ice to an Eskimo. But uh, <laughs> so we became kind of noted as a couple, the Roberts fly casting couple. And uh, Sandy's son became quite good when he was young. And uh, he's gone on to other things since then. But we were the Roberts casting family and people noticed us when we would go to shows or into competitions and, and uh, just kind of continues to grow from then, from there, yeah. Tell her how we got started in the bass fishing world through yes. fly fishing. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of funny and it shows, I don't, I wouldn't say that we, well, I'll just start off. So we were with a, a fly fishing company. And at the time, they wanted to, a fly fishing rod building company here in Colorado, they wanted to build some rods for, for tournament fly fishing anglers that could be used by the pros who had a rod length limitation of eight feet. That was the limitation for uh, FLW at that time. You could only have a rod of eight feet. So they built eight foot eight foot fly rods. And fly rods are very applicable to, to bass and a little niche sort of thing. They're wanting to provide rods to these guys. And there are quite a few of the pros out there that they actually fly fish. They don't, won't admit it, but they like to fly fish. And you can catch bass at a certain time, a certain pattern uh, with fly rod. And so we took it upon ourselves because we were interested in it that we well we were, had a bass boat too we, we had were a bass like the boat. only ones that had a bass boat and we so we're going to take these rods and we are going to compete in bass tournaments mm -hmm. and we are going to make a name for ourselves and for the company promote their rods well we went out on a couple tournaments and we came home with our tail between our legs uh pretty quickly i mean it became very obvious how the bass guys could get to depth, you know, they can get deep much faster than you can with a fly rod. Right. Uh, they just had so many techniques and, and uh, fly rod just couldn't really hold up as far as catching uh, the proper number of fish, and level of fish, the weight of fish that you needed to in a bass tournament. Like, dang, you know, instantly, like a five pounder. It's like, we just fished this whole area with our fly rods. You know, of course he was down like 15 feet and I was fishing we were fishing over top of him with the fly rods and and pretty much that kind of got us going and said, let's do this bass thing with conventional tackle. And, and so we kind of kind of left the fly rod side, but uh, we're, we're focusing on getting our conventional skills, you know, up to everybody else's. That's awesome. What a, wow, what a way to tell it too. Yeah, there's quite a, it's quite a story and there's a lot more that goes along with it, but. Uh, very interesting very interesting now okay so now we heard how clay now how about you sandy uh how did you get started <laughs> so i grew up in california 
um, mm -hmm. lived in a town called Pacifica, right by the ocean, within walking distance of the ocean. Mm -hmm. So my parents had us at the ocean all the time. So we fished the pier, we went crabbing. My mom would take us on the rocks when the um, tide was low to get the mussels and to cook them because we'd cook and eat all these things. Um, and then my parents, my dad was a hardworking construction guy and my mom was a nurse and they didn't have a ton of money. So instead of taking us on trips or we'd take an airplane or something, we would go camping and water skiing. So I grew up camping, water skiing my whole life. And so in the evenings when we were camping, we'd be fishing, you know, we'd water ski first thing in the morning, six in the morning till about 10. And then we'd go swimming or whatever, but then we'd spend the early evenings fishing. So I grew up um, fishing and then in high school she went to college on a water skiing scholarship you know how amazing that is you know how awesome that is what the what school did i go to what the heck is this <laughs> yeah back in the old days when i was in college we actually had i was in california in long beach for college and we actually had water skiing teams long beach state san diego state chico chico state quite a few of the colleges i don't know if they do it anymore and we didn't do that you know we actually had ropes and we went over jumps and we did trick That's skiing it. and solemn course but it was um it was you know you had a rope we we didn't do what they do now where they like are two feet from the boat and then you ride on the right. the wake yeah i mean that was considered extremely dangerous to get that close to a boat when i was competing so we weren't allowed to get that close to the boat unless the motor was off and we were climbing into back into the boat so i didn't i did not grow up in that era of what they're doing now which seems a little bit harder than what i did i at least had a rope to hold on to you know but um so in high school i was in sea scouts which was um boating we all had big 50-foot um, vessels and us kids ran the boats and we would go from Redwood City, California and cruise our boats all the way through the bay to the um, Sacramento Delta. And we'd have, and every year we had what we called the June cruise and we all got together. There was adults on these boats, of course, but us kids were, um, ran and manned the boats. So I grew up my entire life around boats I used to live in Redwood City in an area two blocks from the water. So I would go, you know, walk down to the water every day for my walk with my dog or whatever. But I grew up around the, the uh, water, grew up fishing the bay, the lakes, the ocean. So I, I did it all because I was in a coastal town. So I just grew up that way. And then um, there's, there's a time frame when you're getting older, when your kids are really young, that you kind of miss out on a lot of that stuff. A lot of us ladies, don't do a lot of that stuff because you're the one raising the kids and getting them off to school and that kind of a thing. So um, I did still fish a little bit, but then when I met Clay, it was like, if I didn't start fishing with him, I probably wasn't going to be dating him. So <laughs> I just, <laughs> this was 1999 when we got together, but it was like, I better um, learn how to, you know, hone up my skills in fishing. I was always a good fisherman, but I hadn't done the fly fishing. So the fly fishing was brand new to me when I first met Clay. And my son was fairly little and we went through times of him. We were on a river, a pretty deep, deep river. And Eric, remember the time he fell in and you had to pull him out. We went through times of, you know, ears getting pierced with, uh, <laughs> with, uh, you know, and then um, one of the times when we were doing at the beginning of um, the bass fishing, I got a um, hook in my thumb and couldn't get it out. And so it was a trocar hook. I'll never forget Clay. Oh, sure. And we got, I had to go to the emergency room to get the stupid thing out, right? <laughs> and Clay's telling the emergency room doctor, don't wreck the hook. It's a trocar. <laughs> oh my God. No, you didn't, Clay. He, he was yeah, wanting to cut it. Was. I was like, don't cut that hook. That's a dollar oh fifty God. hook. Yeah. He oh was saying that. Yes, he was. <laughs> he cut it anyway. That's yeah. awesome. But yeah, so I, I just, you know, I grew up around it. My parents were outdoors people and I was in Girl Scouts young, Sea Scouts when I got in high school. I grew up and that's how we were raised. We were raised going to the ocean, going to the lakes, water skiing, fishing, camping. That is how we were raised. I never 
you know, I didn't get on a plane until probably eighth grade where we went to Disneyland once and that was the only plane I would get on until I went to college and had to fly back and forth. But I mean, we, we just, you know, we were raised that this is, you know, and in, in our era, we didn't have any of the electronics games or anything like that at all. They didn't exist. You know, we would take boxes and go across the street on the hill and slide down in the cardboard box down the hill. You know, that's oh, what yeah. we, so we didn't, we did not have. Those were the real yeah. times. Yeah. Not, not today. Those are the but best. Yeah. So just, and then Clay, you know, um, getting together with Clay and it's, it's funny being a married couple doing this because you would think that Clay and I have, we keep all our gear together. We do sort of share it, sort of, but he has all his own tackle, all his own tackle boxes. I have all my own tackle, all my own tackle boxes. I have all my own rods, the casking rods, because they look alike. I put tape on mine so I know which ones are mine. <laughs> Better not touch always, your rods, Clay. No, I always right. catch her down in the basement in my Cinco box trying to steal Cinco's. Well, if he's not watching, <laughs> it looks like a, um, our basement looks like a tackle shop. And I figure if he's got 15 bags of the same color Cinco on one of those hook things that he's not going to notice if I take one. Oh, he, he'll notice. <laughs> <laughs> he does, he counts them. Yeah, I figured as much. He does. he does, Guys, hold, hold on one second. We just need to have a word from our sponsors here. Cast King offers you affordable innovation through the best fishing tackle, including a wide variety of quality fishing rods, fishing reels, fishing line, and fishing accessories. Look for Cast King products on Amazon.com, Tackle Warehouse, AcademyOutdoors.com, eBay, and of course, CastKing.com. Make the switch to Cast King like so many fishing pros have. And we are back with Clay and Sandy Roberts. We are just discussing uh, how these two got together and uh, about their lives and uh, just fascinating. I'm just, I'm over here giggling and just loving your dynamic. You guys are just, you're fun to be around. You just, you have this, uh, like I said, this, this vibe, you're just, it's happy and uh, you guys are you're funny. I love it. <laughs> well, Clay was, um, he worked in a mine and I sold heavy equipment. Uh -huh. So it, so I sold heavy construction equipment and Clay worked in a mine. So, but the funny thing was, although the mine that he worked at was one of my very large customers, we never met that way. Wow, really? So how we didn't, how how did didn't even me? meet. My sister was out visiting um, from California and I was living in Colorado Springs at the time. And we went out dancing to a place called Cowboys. And so, play. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. Here we go. It's a, western, it's a western bar. It's a western bar. So it's not Chippendales or nothing? No. Well, no. <laughs> no. So we went dancing to Cowboys. Like the Chipmunks? Because honestly, at the time, I mean, there's a lot more places now in Colorado Springs, but at the time, really, there wasn't, there wasn't hardly anything there at the time. So... We went to Cowboys and my sister's trying to tell me about this cute guy over there with the white shirt and the cowboy hat on, the white shirt and the black cowboy hat. Ah. And that uh -huh. was Clay. Yeah. That, that sounds pretty hot, Clay. <laughs> yeah, those are both down in the basement in a box in a corner under about 80 other boxes. Hey, you know what? So, that, that was a long time ago. So we didn't have, <laughs> honestly, we didn't have text messaging back then. That wasn't part of your phone. You didn't have that on your phone. Right. So we would, um, this was 1999, right? Wow. Yeah. yeah, 1999. So we would sit at night and um, email each other. There was what they called instant email or something like that. I think that's what it was called. And we could email, it was a little bit of a delay, but we lived kind of far away from each other. We lived over an hour away from each other. So we'd e instant email each other and he didn't even take me on my first date for five weeks. <laughs> I had her on the line. You had her, you had her on the line, Clay. <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. And then and that first date in 1999, we have been together ever since the whole time. Wow. Right? Right? Line hasn't broke yet. Yep. <laughs> this is amazing. Now, talk about, you guys are known for fly fishing. Tell me about the fly fishing. 
um, I've always, now this is, to me, it's been a dream. I've never fly fished before and I've always wanted to. To me, it's an art form. Watching someone fly fish to me is like, I'm in awe. It's, I can watch somebody fly fish literally all day long. It's just beautiful. Uh, just the, the sinking with you and, and the line and being out on the water and just immersed in mother nature. There's just something about that. Uh, just, I find beauty in. And I think that's Absolutely. an attraction to everybody, you know, especially in an area um, where we live, where we're in the trees and. Mm. Um, we, we live very close to the premier trout fishing, i.e. fly fishing area. In you're Colorado. in the place, you're and the capital. Yeah, of this, fly this is the place. Bass fishermen in Colorado are kind of a, an anomaly. I mean, there's a few, but Colorado, you know, what's it bring to your right forefront of your mind fly fishing, fly fishing. Right? yeah people come from all over the world to go fly fishing in colorado and they come all over the world to go fly fishing right here in our backyard wow. not, not too far away from here so fly fishing was the deal you know here yeah. in colorado it's it's what you did um so that's if you're a fishing fisherman you're you're going to be a, a fly fisherman if you're living in colorado we do, we, um, you know, we'll, get, we'll sneak off and do some fly fishing every once in a while. We went, uh, we did a fly fishing video not too long ago where um, you're going to use, it's on YouTube now on the Cast King channel, but you'll see mostly me in it because somebody has to be filming. So a lot of times, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's right. A lot right. of times when Smokey that we started the video at, we had to move to another lake an hour and a half away to continue the video, but we were fly fishing for trout and then we, we put it into the casking kitchen and we um, showed how to clean the trout and how to catch it and what we were going to cook it into and that type of thing. Um, but yeah, typically in our fly fishing things, if we do a video, one of us is probably not going to be there because one of us is typically filming. We do, um, you know, we do like to sneak off and go fly fishing. It is very fun where we are competitive is in fly casting. We are both really good casters. We put on an event every year that's gotten pretty popular now where we combine fly fishers and conventional anglers and they have to be high level. We don't, you know, they can't be somebody that just strolled in um, and they compete as teams. And we do this at March, well, March of 2020 got canceled. It was one of the first COVID things that got canceled. And then all of the ones that are scheduled for 2021 are now canceled. So hopefully we'll get those going again. And yeah, we had 20. Brett Chapman and Cliff Crochet both flew into town to, to help wow. us out. That's Clay, awesome. They were Clay's teammates and Clay and Brent um, won in 2019 in Denver and then Clay and Defending Cliff, Clay and Cliff won in 2020 in Denver. That's and awesome. Then Clay got second place. I don't remember who you were. Oh, Clay got second place in Utah, but we didn't have enough conventional casters in Utah. So right. Clay's team got second place and he competed as a conventional caster in that. So that was quite the thing. Clay is equally as good of a conventional caster in competition as he is a fly caster. Wow. Clay can cast, people don't realize that with him, but we, we did American Casting Association. And when we were practicing for that and learning how to compete in American Casting Association, unfortunately, we did not get to compete very much because we really didn't have a group here in Colorado, but we were practicing and learning casting with all different kinds of rods for American casting, not just fly rods. So he's, he's a really good caster. Oh, wow. In all areas. So <laughs> that's so awesome. My face, my face is red. <laughs> You're blushing. Clay's blushing yeah. over here. <laughs> we do um, Teva Mountain Games here in Colorado. Unfortunately, it got canceled. And a lot of times we have another event going on when they're going, but we've entered theirs before and done fairly well. Um, and it's fly casting, and you have to cast, and they start with about 100 people, and then they get down to the top 10 out of over 100 people and then the 10 um, fish on a it's a drift boat fishing thing then you're fly fishing out of the drift boat so we've done that we don't have a lot of fly fishing tournaments available to be honest it's not um that was one of the other things with bass fishing for us we do like to fly fish but we also are very competitive and there's a very limited amount of fly fishing events that we can do yeah we, we would practice 
an hour, an hour and a half to two hours a day, every day for a year for one event. Oh, I mean, wow. That's, that's all that's, there is. So That's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty, wow. pretty heavy duty, but it's what you have to do. And it's very yeah. competitive. You know, there's a lot of other guys that are quite talented here in this area as far with a fly rod. Yeah, it's, it's so we, you know, our fly fishing is more for fun because most of the events that go on are not going to be close to us. So, but all that practice and trying to be super accurate, you know, put a little tiny weightless fly, you know, into a target the size of a, a teacup has really paid off on the fishing side now. Now we're able to utilize all those skills that we spent all those years being Tony. extra critical. Tony. Yeah, now, now we can go to the river. You know, and all these guys from Denver, you know, they're going up and up and down the rivers and stuff, and they're bypassing a lot of fish that just because they don't have the casting skill to be able to present that fly exactly. to that trout in that extra special spot, we're, we're lucky that that's where it comes in. We have the talent, yeah. And so we're able to capitalize on that, and we're very thankful that we did, you know, that's awesome. Practice and, you know, pay, pay our dues, so to speak. and pays off in some pretty pretty nice fish now. We've had um what what's the group called that we went with Al up at Eleven Mile? Um the soldiers yeah, Anglers um, of Honor. Anglers of Honor. So um Cass King actually has an Anglers of Honor fly rod. Um and so we help out at Eleven Mile Lake, which is close to where we are. And um it's a trout lake. Um most of the people just want to fish with whatever they, you know, it's a, it's a charity, a lure or whatever. Right. When we bring them on our boat, we work with them. But we, you had the one year where the guy it was kind of fun. The guy brought his angler of honor rod and then clay rigged it up for him and showed him how to cast it. It's difficult when you're on a bass boat trying to have somebody fly cast, especially right. a beginner, because who knows what they're going to hit, you know, the trolling motor, the motor, exactly. the steering wheel. It's not like if you're just on the shore, but still, it was very fun for us. We've had a couple of them that have brought the rods with them. Anglers of Honor gives all these people one of those Cast King Angler of Honor fly rods. And oh, wow. um, it's very cool when they I do didn't know bring that. them. Mm -hmm. wow. And it's very cool when they bring them because we, we are very skilled and knowledgeable in fly fishing. So we're able to actually take the rod. Usually we'll have some fly fishing gear with us just, to, just in case something like that comes up. Because most of the people will just fish conventional but some of them do bring the fly rods that have been given to them and then we uh, you know show them how to cast and stuff so we do anytime we can participate in a fly fishing thing we did do a um a tournament a couple of years back uh al and his wife did it also and it was a trout tournament up in um what lake was it Blue Mesa. Blue Mesa. but then the next year the lake was so low they couldn't do it and then this year COVID came and so they didn't do it. So, but we had fun with that. We had fly rods and conventional rods for that. All of us did. So that was very fun. But we um, we do fly fish still a lot, but our competitions are 99% bass fishing. I would uh, I would love to, I'm, like I said, I've, it's a dream to go fly fishing and to learn the art. Um, is it something, will you teach me? I mean, you guys gonna yes, teach me, please? Please. Is it something? How long, how long uh, will it take to learn? I mean, what is something like that? Sandy, Sandy takes people who do not, have never had a fly rod in their hand. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's a guide for a five-star hotel here um, in Colorado. Oh, wow. And she takes them up and within minutes, I mean, you are fly fishing. But, you know, it does take some practice, right. you know, to, to be to the level like, you know, what you visualize in your mind. Yeah. But uh, you can fly fish immediately. I mean, literally immediately. You can uh, go to the river and catch yourself a trout on a fly. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited. You know what goes and to my mind? To be, it's what? I said, do you ever see that movie, uh, River Runs Through It? Oh, I see. Has okay, everybody? Brad, yeah, that's what I goes. Wanna, okay. Oh, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt. I don't want to break it. Brad through. Pitt this. Brad Pitt, <laughs> this. Brad Pitt did not do the casting in that, just so you know. I don't want ah, you to do that. Thank I, you. And, 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 <laughs> The guys that actually did, they call it stunt casting, or, or some of the fellows that we actually compete against in, in competitions. Really? Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's crazy. Yeah, Brad Brad was there just for eye candy to look nice, but he really didn't do the casting. You know, it's kind of like, 
It's kind of like I picture like, you know, those Wonder Woman movies and I picture you coming in as a stunt woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I mean that in a good way that you can do all the stunts because those ladies wouldn't be able to. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. Like you're, you're, you're pretty enough that you could be Wonder Woman, but they, but you would be the good stunt woman type. Thank you, Sandy. You made my night. Yeah. I would love to do that. I would be a stunt woman. I tell you what, I love getting down and just getting, you know, getting, when I was in sports in high school, I used to, uh, I would always be on crutches or I would have a brace on my arm. <laughs> on my oh, arm. No. I mean, I'm playing basketball. I was point guard and I'm out there and I'm like getting knocked into chairs on the, on the ground. The rest are like, Nikki, come on. And they're helping me up. <laughs> yeah. I just, I loved it. And I was rough, but uh, well, I can tell you were athletic when you showed us all how to get into that hammock without falling out. It's the craziest <laughs> thing awesome? I've ever seen. She, I don't know if you saw the video, <laughs> no, but somehow Nikki, puts an arm and another arm and a leg and another leg. And then all of the sudden, then she's in the hammock. And then all of a sudden it goes and, and she doesn't fall out. I flipped and it And then up. she's in this part of the hammock, like you're supposed to be, but she's in it. I tell you what, that was so much fun trying that out. <laughs> I, I, I rather you, enjoyed that. We'll teach you how to fly fish and you teach us how to get in these hammocks like that. <laughs> that is but, a deal. That is a deal. I cannot break any bones. I don't, spit I don't want to break any. Yeah. Spit yeah. shake. Well, we can do that without, you know, even with COVID going on, we can <laughs> spit shake through COVID, through the screen. Yeah. yeah with with the screen. Yeah. That's awesome. That is a deal. I'll take you up on that. Yeah. I like that. I yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah, great. Dude, yeah. Don't, don't hesitate. You know, if you get in the area. Yeah, please. You, you know, we got enough room where you can sleep with fluke somewhere here. So. I would love that. Fluke is awesome. He is the casking mascot. I see him all the time. You guys have him everywhere with you. That is great. That's a beautiful dog. He has matching jerseys. All of our jerseys have. <laughs> it's true. That's Every, all, I think we have four or five that he has that match. I mean, they've been made for him. I made the pattern. I invented the pattern. Then I send the pattern to the jersey company, and then they make the identical jersey in that pattern for him. And they I don't like it. me for it, but you know. Yeah, lot, some of these big shows that we go to don't allow dogs in the show. I know, what's that? Except for Fluke, because he's part of the show. He comes in with us, and so he's, yes. he's quite well known, and he's very well behaved, and he just sits, little kids can crawl all over him. and He's, he's, he's got his own following. Yep. Yeah, he and, does. He has his own Facebook. The, um, um, oh he, well, he, the Facebook page he doesn't post on very much, but <laughs> Luke has quite a few followers on Instagram, <laughs> including me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Fish, that's Fishing Dog Fluke. Yeah, he's, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Yes. He, tell our followers. Yes, Fishing Fan Fluke. <laughs> no, Fishing Dog Fluke. Fishing Dog Fluke. Follow right. him. That's, <laughs> yes, Fishing that's Dog great. Fluke. He's funny. Oh, I love Fluke. So. Now, I wanted to ask you guys, what, is there anything outside of this that you guys do together that you have a passion for that uh, we may not see, you know, on camera or um, something that you guys do together or something you enjoy, uh, a hobby or something that, uh, it's not fishing or kayaking? Well, we, we, I hate to say this, but we're maybe pretty one-sided. This is about all we do. <laughs> If it's, that's, it's fishing, no, that's great. That just, we're doing, yeah, we're doing shows, you know, we're building stuff for shows. We're you don't teaching. have time to do anything else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we make it our, it's what, what we do. Like. Yeah, we really don't do much else, you know, other than fam, you know, we do family stuff when we can, and right. but it's it's really about fishing, cash king, and we try to work know. out every once in a while. Yeah. We want to sleep quite often, probably a couple miles a day. That's um, just so we can fish better. I, I, I love to cook. Um, and Kai likes to eat, so we're a good pair with that. So I do <laughs> that a works lot perfectly. Of, I, I like to bake. Baking is probably my hobby. I like to bake. If it's cookies and cakes and stuff, I really like to do it. So baking and it, once again, you know, we would go to a show or something and then I'd say, oh, I need a tray of cookies for Friday. 
So I need the tray for Saturday, you know, so I bring these big, huge trays of cookies. He's trying to pull my arm out because he says it's blocking the screen. <laughs> You're out of the screen. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I really like to, and Clay, every once in a while, he's a pretty good cook when he wants to be. We have a smoker and he likes to, you know, cook on the smoker. Yeah, I mean, attach flies, build yeah. rods. You, you know, you it's, all, it's, all, it's all related, you know. You have the cast. It takes, me, takes, me, takes me a month, two months just to go through my tackle. I mean, I tear all the I tear all the casting reels down all the way to the frame, build them back up, lubricate them, clean yeah. them. You know, right. it, that takes a lot of time to to do that. I I, I like my tackle and I take good care of it. And so. I like to kind of invent things that people haven't seen before. So like, I'll I have a rod rack on our Phoenix boat that every time we're fishing, people say, "Where did you get that? How did you make that?" And it's I for all of our bigger bass boats. I've made these racks and, you know, so I like to do things like that. And, but it's all, it, it is, it's all fishing related. I like to make things and make them for fishing or something that I think might work better or help us. You know, it's kind of like a hobby. Okay. I can build that. I can build that. And so, and then hit clay. Um, we found some jigs that we liked and clay figured out how to make them and got a mold for them. So clay makes our jigs for us. And, you know, so it's, it's all, a hobby but it's all fishing related wow that's awesome i mean and you also do the cast king kitchen yeah that right? see that's that yeah and that's my hobby of um cooking but yeah the cast king kitchen i actually um went to college in food and nutrition so i i um, awesome. started in restaurants and that kind of thing when i was younger so I started in um managing restaurants and that's you know kind of my food background but i always I had gotten accepted to the Culinary Institute of New York when I got out of high school, but it's too expensive. I just couldn't go to that. So it's like, okay, I guess I'll go to regular college, you know, but I still stayed in the food industry end. And then I figured out that sales was something that I would make more money. And so I stayed in food and I got into sales end. And then once I was in sales, I got into marketing and higher level sales and other products. And so I, it went from working in the food industry to working as a salesperson. And, you know, and then when I semi-retired, I said, okay, I'm still going to sort of work. So I do, I still, I guide is what I do when, except for COVID, I didn't guide this year. It was just a little bit too close for me to guide um, during this year. But, um, you know, I stayed, I kind of went all fishing now. And I think Clay pretty much has too. So. And now you're both guides? You both do guiding? I guide very little. I mean, sometimes if they ask, I do, but I, I don't. I don't have the person skills like Sandy does. We have a neighbor up here that has, um, that runs a private ranch like within a half a mile of us. So the, every once in a while, they'll call us up and have us come over to guide people over there right across the highway and and basically we just do it for fun we're just kind of helping him and then they have these big dinners and they have us come to those but um the fish we like it because the fish are huge <laughs> they're huge in there we told the guy where to get the fish to stock it and um so that's that's fun we do that too but that's more you know we do more stuff that we volunteer our time in i think than we actually get paid for except yeah, when yeah. i really do guide for the hotel but guiding we you know, if somebody wants to learn how to fish or something, we're all about it. We, we'll teach them how to fly fish or spend hours with them teaching them how to cast. Oh, that's we're, great. So, yeah, that's nice. You pass that on, you know, especially with fly fishing. Like I said, it, it's such a beautiful art form. And uh, I think everybody should at least try it, uh, which I've been wanting to do. So it's just like I, I said, gonna, yeah, just, I think you'd enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And when you catch your first fish on a fly rod, it's just really exciting. And I remember at the beginning, I didn't care what I caught on a fly rod. I didn't care if I caught a bluegill or a chub or whatever on a fly rod. To me, it was like, and Clay would go, oh, no, no, you don't want that fish, the trout over here. And I'm like, no, I, we're on our float tubes pedaling around. And I'm like, no, no, I just caught nine chubs. And he's like, yeah, those are chubs. You've got to come over here. You want to get, no, no, I'm, you know, so to, when you're first, when you first start fly fishing, anything you catch is fun. I think. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's a sport that it can be rewarding without actually catching a fish, you know, 
you're out in that environment. Yeah, that's true. You know, Very true. You have that connection, like what you see, you know, the, the gracefulness of it and the timing of it. And, you know, the, catching the fish is kind of secondary <laughs> to, right. to the a lot of times. It's funny, Nikki. I have put sh very short 15 second videos just for fun of one of the rivers. I did this a couple years ago. One of the rivers, and there's nothing on it except the river flowing, and hundreds of people will view it just because of the, the you know, the sound. Because when you do one of those videos, you, you have the sound of the water going through the rocks. And that's all you hear. Maybe you'll hear a bird tweeting in the background or whatever. And it's some, there's something about it that even people that don't fly fish, even people that don't fish, they want to look at that right then and there. And it's the same feeling you get when you're fishing, you know, that when you're in it, the noise and the sound you hear, it's not semi trucks and it's not cars driving. And it's typically not people yelling and you know, it's, it's, you're really one within the nature of the birds and the, to me, it's, it's the event of being there more than it is actually catching the fish. Right. Of being within the environment that you're in, you know. Absolutely. I absolutely agree that. That's yeah. perfect. Wow. Wow. I can't thank you guys enough for coming on the show and just getting to talk with you guys and letting everybody know Sandy and Clay and just how, uh, how amazing you guys really are. Uh, thank you thank so you. much. Is there any other, um, your social media sites that, so people can follow you uh, about fly fishing if they wanted to learn how to fly fish? Uh, so we, um, on Instagram, I, we just go under my Instagram, which is Sandy Roberts, Sandy with an I, Roberts79. Um, Facebook, we have our own page, which is Clay and Sandy Roberts. We each have our own pages which most of the stuff we do goes under my page on Facebook. Um, and then we did a pretty um, good training video for the beginner fly caster a couple of years ago with Cast King. And that one, do you know what it's called? It's, it's pretty, it's, had, it's been viewed several hundred thousand times now. That's the way I can find it. But we did a fly casting video how to for Cast King. I would assume maybe it's on the Cast King channel. I don't know. It was probably put out there by Cast King before the Cast King channel was, um, was out. Oh, wow. But that's an actual instructional for the beginning person on fly, fly casting. So every once in a while, we'll do something live or when the weather's better, where we'll, you know, and hopefully we'll get to do a couple more of those this summer. We'll, we'll teach people how to fly cast again and do it live on Facebook or something like that. It's just a little bit difficult because you don't, it's very hard to see the line and stuff when you're doing right. a video like that. So maybe we'll get uh, another one live, but yeah, you, you'll see, um, we do how-to videos you can see those on cast king channel on youtube um we'll do anything from fly casting to uh tying a fly to tying a special lure hopefully clay's um gonna do some on the jigs he's been making oh, wow. we do the cast king kitchen i think that now is on the um, cast king channel so a lot of things we do now we have we send to cast king so they go on the cast king channel so that's where most of our stuff our videos that we do would hopefully be ending up perfect perfect that is wonderful guys again thank you so much for coming on the show uh it's been a absolute pleasure to have you uh and get to dive into what you guys do and uh who you are i was really excited about that and uh again thank you so much for joining us well thank you thank for you. having us we appreciate it and we appreciate your time and everything you do so thank you yeah. absolutely thanks guys and uh so K-A-S-T-K-I-N-G spells affordable innovation. Make the switch to Cast King for the best value in fishing gear. Cast King offers you an affordable, quality alternative to high-priced fishing products. Thanks for spending time today with Cast King on the line. As always, keep grinding, stay strong, and always, I will catch you in the next adventure. Thanks, guys. Bye. Great having you. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. <laughs>